Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. First, the Talking About Interest Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to talk about your hobbies, how often you do them, and much more. Second, 10 phrases you need for introducing yourself. If you're new to the language and can't yet introduce yourself, then this one-minute lesson is for you. Third, how to say hello like a native speaker. This quick lesson will teach you 15 unique ways to say hello and greet others. Fourth, most common ways to say goodbye. What about saying bye? Do you know all the ways to say bye in your target language? This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. Fifth, the how are you and how to answer it writing workbook. With this printable PDF workbook, you'll learn all the ways to ask and answer the question, how are you? And you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. And finally, our big collection of language learning audiobooks for anyone who's watched this far. If you visit the link below, we'll send you over to our library of language learning audiobooks, which you can get for free. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Everybody, my name is Alicia. Minasan konnichiwa, Alicia des. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to give simple directions in Japanese. Let's get started. Okay, let's start by looking at the dialogue for this lesson. The first line in the dialogue is this: Toshokan wa doko desu ka? Toshokan wa doko desu ka? Where is the library? The response is, Masugu itte kudasai. Sore kara kousa ten o migi ni magatte kudasai. Toshokan wa hidari ni arimasu. So at faster pace, Masugu itte kudasai. Sore kara kousa ten o migi ni magatte kudasai. Toshokan wa hidari ni arimasu. This means go forward and then turn right at the intersection. The library will be on the left. Let's take a look at some more examples of this and break down the parts of the sentence. Okay, great. So let's look at a breakdown of these direction related sentences and look at some more examples. First, let's take a look in depth at the dialogue. The dialogue begins with a basic question Where is the library? Notice this question starts with the location we're looking for, Toshokan, library. Then the answer begins with the first direction, Masugu itte kudasai. So, Masugu means go straight. And then, itte kudasai is a polite way of saying go ahead. So, masugu itte kudasai, if we want to translate this directly, would mean please go straight. We follow this with sore kara, which means and then or after that. Kousaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. So, here we have our next kind of point, our key point, our location that we need to use for reference purposes. Kousaten means intersection. So, kousaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. Migi means right. So we have our two direction words here. Masugu, go straight. Migi, right. And then later on we have Toshokan wa hidari ni arimasu. Toshokan, so library, wa hidari ni arimasu. Hidari means left. So we have our three direction words in this sample sentence. So let's take a look at some more examples and see how we can shift these words around. So for example, in this sentence we have Hidari ni itte kudasai. Hidari ni itte kudasai. So hidari means left. It's in the same position as masugu itte kudasai was in this example. Hidari ni itte kudasai. Sore kara after that. Kousaten wo hidari ni magatte kudasai. Ginko wa migi ni arimasu. So in this sentence, we're looking for ginko, so the bank. In this case, we've replaced toshokan, which we had in the first example, with ginko. So we simply put ginko, or the place that we're looking for in this position in the sentence. In this case, we're giving a reply for the direction. So one more time. Hidari ni itte kudasai. Sore kara kousaten wo hidari ni magatte kudasai. Ginko wa migi ni arimasu. 
So, 銀行は右にあります means the bank is on the right. You'll notice this pattern right here. 右にあります or in this case, 左にあります This is how we say it's on the left or it's on the right. So, in English, we use that preposition on in this sentence, right? 左にあります is the pattern that we use. It's on the left and 右にあります for it's on the right. Let's take a look at one more example sentence then. まっすぐ行ってください。それから交差点を右に曲がってください。空約証は左にあります。So again, we have go straight to begin the direction. まっすぐ行ってください。Then we have それから after that 交差点を右に曲がってください。Turn right at the intersection. Finally, 区役所は左にあります。区役所 in this case. 区役所 means city hall. So, 区役所は左にあります。One more point that you should consider when you're giving directions is this right here. 交差点を In all of these example sentences, we see 交差点を So, we don't want to use に as we're doing here. 左にあります。We're using 交差点を in this case. So, 交差点を左に曲がって。交差点を右に曲がって。So that's another point to watch out for. Be careful of these little particles. Okay, so with the sentence breakdowns done and with these example sentences in our mind, let's take a look at the basic pattern for this lesson. Okay, great. Let's take a look at the basic pattern for this lesson. The basic pattern to reply to someone's request for directions is direction, itte kudasai. So direction here means go straight. Left or right. So, direction, itte kudasai. This means go direction. So, go straight, go left, or go right. Itte kudasai. So, this is a more polite way to say go in that direction. Kind of like saying go straight, please, or go left, please, or go right, please. Then the follow up to this is sore kara place o right, left. Ni magatte kudasai. So, in this follow up, we're saying after that, after this first direction, Next location. So this can be another building, it can be an intersection, whatever. Place o, right or left, depending on the direction, ni magatte kudasai. This magatte kudasai means turn. So this comes from the verb magaru, yeah? So magatte kudasai means please turn. Please turn right or left at this place. So re kara place o, right or left, ni magatte kudasai. And then turn right or left at the place, okay? Then we have the location, the final location. Place wa right left ni arimas. So place the location, the actual destination wa right or left depending on the street. Right or left ni arimas. So the place that you're looking for will be on the right or on the left. Great. Finally, let's take a look at some key vocabulary words that you can use with this pattern to make your own directions. Okay, lastly, let's take a look at the key vocabulary for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about two different categories of vocabulary. We talked about direction words and place words. Let's review the direction words first. First, we have masugu, masugu, which means forward or straight. Masugu. Note, in this word, we have a stop, so not masugu, but masugu. Masugu. Make sure you have kind of that stop or that breath in the middle of the word. So not masugu, masugu, masugu. This means forward or straight. Next we have left, hidari. Hidari, this means left. We saw this in hidari ni magatte kudasai. Please turn left. On the other hand, we have migi, migi, right. We saw this in migi ni magatte kudasai. Please turn right. So these are our direction related words for this lesson. Now let's take a look at our place words. So we saw some of these in the dialogue and the example sentences. Let's review. First is toshokan. Toshokan. Toshokan means library. We saw this in the first example sentence. Toshokan wa doko desu ka? Where is the library? Next is kousaten. 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 This means Intersection, intersection. So we talked about turning right or turning left at the intersection. Kousaten. Next is kohi shoppu. Kohi shoppu. 
These have long sounds here. So not kohi, but kohi shoppu. Kohi shoppu, which means coffee shop. Coffee shop, maybe your destination. Kohi shoppu wa doko desu ka? The next word is kuyakusho. 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 Kuyakusho means city hall. City hall, or you might also see it translated as ward office. Kuyakusho. Finally, we have shingo. 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 Shingo means traffic light or traffic signal. So we can use all of these to give directions and to ask about certain destinations in the city. Do you remember how to say forward? Masugu. Masugu. And how to say go, as in go forward? Do you remember how to say go forward? And how to say right? Migi. Migi. Do you remember how to say turn, as in turn right? Magatte kudasai. Magatte kudasai. And how to say turn right? Migi ni magatte kudasai. Migi ni magatte kudasai. Do you remember how to say intersection? Kosaten. Kosaten. And how to say turn right at the intersection? Kosaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. Kosaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. Do you remember how to say and then? Sore kara. Sore kara. And how to say and then turn right at the intersection? Sore kara kousaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. Sore kara kousaten wo migi ni magatte kudasai. Do you remember how to say left? Hidari. Hidari. And how to say we'll be on the left? Hidari ni arimasu. Hidari ni arimasu. Do you remember how to say library? Toshokan. Toshokan. And how to say the library will be on the left? Toshokan wa hidari ni arimasu. Toshokan wa hidari ni arimasu. Do you remember how to say coffee shop? Coffee shop. Coffee shop. And how to say city hall? Kuyakusho. Kuyakusho. Do you remember how to say traffic light? Shingo. Shingo. Great! Now you know how to give simple directions in Japanese. We hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Also, don't forget to check us out at JapanesePod101.com for some other things that can help you with your Japanese studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson. Jane!
Hi everybody, my name is Alicia. In this lesson, we're going to talk about using common adverbs of frequency to talk about your daily habits in Japanese. Okay, let's begin by looking at the vocabulary that we're going to use in this lesson. On this side of the board is this bar graph. The idea with this graph is to give you an idea of the differences in frequency between these adverbs. So for this lesson, let's imagine that this is a scale of days. So from zero days in a week to one, two, three, all the way up to seven days a week. We're going to look at different adverbs of frequency that you can use to express different levels of frequency of an action for your life. So let's begin over here. At the seven day level is mainichi, mainichi. Mainichi means every day, every day, every day, mainichi. Something you do every day is something you can use mainichi to talk about. Second is this one, itsumo, itsumo. So itsumo means always, always. So something that you do very, very often, but maybe not every day can be used with always. So we can use itsumo to describe that. The next one is yoku. Yoku. So yoku means often. Yoku is something that's a little bit less than always, something a little bit less than itsumo, maybe on this scale around the four to five day mark. The next one is tokidoki. Tokidoki sometimes. Tokidoki. So sometimes is a little bit less than often. Following that is amari. Amari. Amari means seldom, seldom. So something you don't do very often. And finally, at the end of the scale over here at the zero day point is zenzen. Zenzen. So zenzen means never. So we're going to practice using all of these words and we're going to put them together with some other information to create basic sentences that you can use to talk about your daily life. So let's move along to the dialogue section. Okay, let's take a look at a short dialogue that uses one of these adverbs of frequency. Let's start with this short exchange here. So, the first person says, Asa gohan wo tabemasu ka? Asa gohan wo tabemasu ka? Which means, do you eat breakfast? Asa gohan wo tabemasu ka? The response is, Hai, mainichi tabemasu. Hai, mainichi tabemasu. Which means, yes, I eat breakfast every day. In this sentence, mainichi in red is the adverb of frequency. This one means every day. So the response is yes, every day I eat, quite literally. So let's take a look next at some other example sentences that use different adverbs of frequency. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other example sentences that use adverbs of frequency. First, tokidoki ongaku wo kikimasu. Tokidoki ongaku wo kikimasu. In this sentence, the adverb of frequency is here. Tokidoki, sometimes. This sentence means, I sometimes listen to music. Tokidoki ongaku wo kikimasu. You'll notice the verb at the end of this sentence is positive. Kikimasu, kikimasu. Let's compare this to the next example sentence. Anmari kohi wo nomimasen. Anmari kohi wo nomimasen. In this sentence, the adverb of frequency is here, amari, which means seldom. This sentence means, I seldom drink coffee. Note in this sentence, the verb is in the negative form, nomimasen, nomimasen, amari kohi wo nomimasen. In this sentence, the verb at the end was positive. We're going to talk about why in the next section when we look at the grammar. Okay, now let's take a look at the grammar patterns you need to know to make sentences like these. There are two patterns, one uses positive and one uses negative verb forms. Let's look at the positive verb form pattern first. You use this positive verb form pattern when your adverb is one of these. Itsumo, yoku, fudan, tokidoki, tamani, mainichi, so we didn't talk about hudan and tamani in this lesson. We didn't use them in the focus vocabulary section, but they are commonly used. You can think of hudan as something like usually, and tamani as something like occasionally or every once in a while. The point is, when you use one of these adverbs of frequency to express your idea, you need to use the positive verb form. So this means something something, mas, 
So this indicates you need to use the verb in the positive form. It can be polite or it can be casual form. That's up to you. It depends on who you're talking to. But make sure you use the positive verb form when you use one of these adverbs. For example, we saw that up here in tokidoki ongaku wo kikimasu, the positive form. Then, the negative form. When you use one of these adverbs of frequency, amari or zenzen, you need to use the negative verb form. So something, something, masen, if you're using the polite form. If you're using the non polite form or the casual form, that's also okay. But just make sure that you use the negative. We saw this in this example sentence here. Amari kohi o nomimasen. So we use the negative because we used this adverb of frequency, amari. So when you're building your own sentences, make sure you consider. Which adverb of frequency you're going to use, and check to make sure your verb form matches. A quick and easy way to remember the pattern to use or to remember the order of words is this. You can imagine I here for your subject if you're making a sentence about your everyday life. I plus your adverb here plus your verb phrase. So you can put these three elements together subject, adverb, verb phrase to make a sentence like these. Do you remember how to say every day? Mai nichi. Mai nichi. And how to say eat? Tabemasu. Tabemasu. Do you remember how to say I eat every day? And how to say drink? Do you remember how to say listen? Do you remember how to say breakfast? Asagohan. Asagohan. And how to say music? Ongaku. Ongaku. Do you remember how to say coffee? Kohi. And how to say often? Yoku. Yoku. Do you remember how to say sometimes? Toki doki. Toki doki. And how to say always? Itsumo. Itsumo. Do you remember how to say never? Zenzen. Zenzen. And how to say seldom? Amari. Amari. Okay, great. So now you know how to use common adverbs of frequency to talk about your daily habits in Japanese. If you have any questions, comments, or if you want to practice making some example sentences with this information, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. Thanks very much for watching this lesson, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Hi everybody, my name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about how to use greetings and parting expressions in Japanese.
Okay, let's take a look at the vocabulary for this lesson. We've grouped the vocabulary according to time of day. So let's start with expressions you can use in the morning. First, we have ohayou gozaimasu, ohayou gozaimasu. This is a polite expression that means good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu, ohayou gozaimasu, good morning. The shorter version is ohayou, ohayou, this means morning. So it sounds a little shorter in English, just as it sounds shorter in Japanese. Ohayou gozaimasu, to sound polite. Ohayou, to sound more casual and close to someone. We use these expressions in the morning, from very early morning until probably 11 or just before noon. So use these to greet someone in the morning. If it's later in the day, you can simply use konnichiwa, 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 konnichiwa. This means hello. Use this throughout the day. Anytime the sun is up later in the day, you can use this. Finally, at the end of the day, we use this expression. Konbanwa, 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 konbanwa. This means good evening, good evening. So use this when you meet someone in the evening. Evening or I suppose late at night, depending on what you're up to. If it's dark outside, you can use konbanwa with confidence. So let's take a look at the other side of this image. Let's look at parting expressions. You'll notice there's a big group here because we don't really have parting expressions that are connected so closely to time of day. Let's take a look. First, shitsureishimasu. This is a very formal way to say goodbye. You might hear this at work when you're leaving a room. Your coworkers might use this as well. This means goodbye. We typically don't use this with our friends and family members. It sounds quite polite. You can use this expression, mata ashita. Mata ashita, mata ashita. See you tomorrow. Mata ashita. You can use this one. It's very easy for many people. Bye bye, bye bye. So, as you can imagine, this just means bye bye. It's very casual and sounds a little childish, but many people like to use this, especially with close friends and family members. Bye bye. Next is ja, mata, ja, mata. So, this is a very casual expression, which means see you. Ja, mata. So you can think of it as like, okay, see you then. Super short, super quick, very casual. Finally, is this one. Matane, 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 matane. So this also means see you or see you next time or see you again soon. This ne makes it a little bit softer than something like ja, mata, which sounds a little bit rougher. So you can use all of these expressions to say goodbye to someone at any time of day. The last vocabulary word here is this one. Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi nasai means good night. So use it to say good night at the end of the day. You can use this with friends and family members. So this is how we say goodbye or good night at many different times of day and how we greet each other. Let's take a look at a dialogue now and some other points that use these expressions. Okay, let's take a look at a sample dialogue that uses some of these expressions. Let's imagine two people are saying hello in the morning. The first person might say, Ohayou gozaimasu, good morning. And the other person might say, Ohayou, morning. So this is a very typical morning exchange. Ohayou gozaimasu, Ohayou, simple as that. Okay, let's finish this lesson by taking an in-depth look at the key expressions used. First, let's take a look at greetings. As mentioned earlier, the expression ohayou gozaimasu is more polite than just ohayou. We use ohayou with friends and family and people we're close to. Ohayou gozaimasu is something you would probably use at work or maybe at school. This Gozaimasu makes the expression polite. You'll see this throughout your studies. Using the polite form of a verb at the ending increases the level of politeness. We don't have this with konnichiwa or with konbanwa, but it is very important to note that both of these words are spelled with this wa at the end. You may have learned that this means ha, but in these expressions, konnichiwa and konbanwa, we use this wa here, like this. We don't use the other hiragana form of wa in this expression, so please take note of that when you're spelling this word. 
Lastly, let's go to parting expressions. First, with shitsure shimasu, we see this same mas form at the ending, yeah? So this shitsure shimasu, some people translate this literally as I am about to do something rude or something like that because this part right here, shitsure, means rude. But we typically use it when we're leaving a room or to excuse ourselves from a situation. So we can understand this as meaning goodbye in certain cases. When you're with your friends, however, you can use expressions like mata ashita or bye bye or mata ne or oyasumi nasai at the end of the day. As talked about earlier, expressions that end with ne sound a little bit softer. So mata ne. We would not use a ne at the end of something like bye bye though, because bye bye already sounds quite soft and close and a little bit childish. So we don't use bye bye ne unless maybe we're speaking to a very, very small child. So it's up to you to choose the expression that best matches your feeling when you're saying goodbye to someone. Do you remember how to say good morning? おはようございます。おはようございます。And how to say morning? おはよう。おはよう。Do you remember how to say hello? こんにちは。こんにちは。and how to say good evening? Konbanwa. Konbanwa. Do you remember how to say good night? Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi nasai. And how to say goodbye? Do you remember how to say see you tomorrow? また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。また明日。
nana, nana. Eight is hachi, hachi. And nine is kyu, kyu. So you might know a couple other words for numbers, like with four or seven, but when you're giving your phone number, you need to use these vocabulary words. So next we're going to look at a dialogue that uses these numbers to give your phone number. Okay, let's take a look at the dialogue for this lesson. First we have this question. Denwa bango wa nanban desu ka? Denwa bango wa nanban desu ka? Denwa bango wa nanban desu ka? Which means, what's your phone number? Denwa bango wa nanban desu ka? The response here is, watashi no denwa bango wa 070. 0-9-0-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-9-0-
2 and how to say 3 3 3 Do you remember how to say 4 4 4 and how to say 5 go go do you remember how to say 6 6 and how to say 7 Nana. Nana. Do you remember how to say eight? Hachi. Hachi. And how to say nine? Q. Q. Do you remember how to say phone number? Denwa bango. Denwa bango. And how to say my? Watashi no. Watashi no. Do you remember how to say my phone number? And how to say my phone number is 070-0999-4198 私の電話番号は 070-0999-4198 です。私の電話番号は070ゼロ九九九四一九八です。Great. So in this lesson, you learned how to give your phone number in Japanese with a basic pattern, and you learned the vocabulary words you need to do so. That means we covered all the numbers you need to give your phone number in Japanese. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Alicia, and I will see you again on JapanesePod101.com. Bye. ありがとうございます. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to use essential social expressions. First, let's look at some examples. すみません. Hi. ありがとうございます. どういたしまして? すみません。大丈夫です。Let's practice. カナさんが道で
How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time and use the proper expression, as in the following example. Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. What's the last word that you learned in your target language? Do you remember? If not, it's probably because you haven't tried learning recently. And we get it. Learning a language can be tough when you have to stop everything else, make time for language, find a resource, and then learn. You have to do a lot of work, even before you actually start learning. But what if you got new words sent to you every day so that all you had to do was learn and not worry about how to learn or what resources to use? You'd learn a lot faster, boost your vocabulary, and understand much more of the language. How to get new words sent to you every day. So in this quick guide, you'll discover why you should learn the lazy way if you want to succeed, how to effortlessly boost your vocabulary in under a minute a day, and how to get free bonus resources on a weekly and monthly basis. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. <laughs> And by lazy, we mean with a resource that guides you from lesson one to two to three, or feeds you new words so that you don't have to waste time figuring out what to do. Why do this? Well, learning a language already requires effort, right? But if you also have to worry about how to learn and what to do, you'll quickly get overwhelmed and discouraged. The point is, the less you have to think about, the better. So give yourself less to worry about and learn with a system that feeds you vocabulary, phrases, and grammar so that you can just focus on improving. Now, how can you do this? If you want to boost your vocabulary, sign up for our free Word of the Day lessons. All new users get this when they sign up for our learning system. The way it works is this free feature sends you new words every day directly to your inbox. It comes to you. You don't have to go chasing for it. All you have to do is check your email, check the meaning of the word, and you're done. All of this takes a minute or less and boosts your vocabulary every day. So even on your busiest days, when you don't have much time, you can still pick up a quick word effortlessly. <laughs> If you want extra resources, we send free vocabulary lists, phrase lists, and PDF workbooks almost every week. And you also get our free gifts of the month every month, which includes our newest PDF cheat sheets, so you can master even more words and phrases and understand more of your target language. Again, you don't have to worry about chasing down resources. If you're a member, all of this gets sent directly to your email inbox so that you can boost your vocabulary without much effort. So if you want to get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. What's the last word that you learned in your target language? Do you remember? If not, it's probably because you haven't tried learning recently. And we get it. Learning a language can be tough when you have to stop everything else, make time for language, find a resource, and then learn. You have to do a lot of work, even before you actually start learning. But what if you got new words sent to you every day so that all you had to do was learn and not worry about how to learn or what resources to use? You'd learn a lot faster, boost your vocabulary, and understand much more of the language. How to get new words sent to you every day. So in this quick guide, you'll discover why you should learn the lazy way if you want to succeed, how to effortlessly boost your vocabulary in under a minute a day, and how to get free bonus resources on a weekly and monthly basis. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. <laughs> And by lazy, we mean with a resource that guides you from lesson one to two to three, or feeds you new words so that you don't have to waste time figuring out what to do. Why do this? 
Well, learning a language already requires effort, right? But if you also have to worry about how to learn and what to do, you'll quickly get overwhelmed and discouraged. The point is, the less you have to think about, the better. So give yourself less to worry about and learn with a system that feeds you vocabulary, phrases, and grammar so that you can just focus on improving. Now, how can you do this? If you want to boost your vocabulary, sign up for our free Word of the Day lessons. All new users get this when they sign up for our learning system. The way it works is this free feature sends you new words every day directly to your inbox. It comes to you. You don't have to go chasing for it. All you have to do is check your email, check the meaning of the word, and you're done. All of this takes a minute or less and boosts your vocabulary every day. So even on your busiest days, when you don't have much time, you can still pick up a quick word effortlessly. If you want extra resources, we send free vocabulary lists, phrase lists, and PDF workbooks almost every week. And you also get our free gifts of the month every month which includes our newest PDF cheat sheets, so you can master even more words and phrases and understand more of your target language. Again, you don't have to worry about chasing down resources. If you're a member, all of this gets sent directly to your email inbox so that you can boost your vocabulary without much effort. So if you want to get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.